here on uh, Jason Carter's farm here in Richland County, South Carolina, as part of our uh, Soil Health or Healthy Soils for Sustainable Cotton Field Day. And I'm going to ask Jason a few questions about why you have wheat maybe in your rotation, and then maybe if you could talk a little bit about you're going to see the cover crop. Uh, and here it is, June the 15th or 16th, we're out here today, and you're going to be seeding that. Why would you even think about doing that? So, Right. Yeah, well, in the, in the past, normally, in most everybody in, in the southeast, especially around me, they will they harvest their wheat crop. They immediately come in as soon as they can and plant a soybean crop. Okay. But this year, with the lower commodity prices, especially the soybeans being where they are, I'm figuring, you know, we got a fairly decent price on our, our wheat crop and had an okay yield. I'm thinking I'm gonna get more of a benefit on planting a cover crop after my wheat crop. Um, yes, there probably is some money to be made if we can have an average yield on the beans, even at where the prices are. But I'm looking for next year when this goes into a corn crop, I'm figuring if I can do a cover crop now this summer and then we do another cover crop this winter, maybe I can cut back on my inputs for next year. Uh, maybe cut back on that nitrogen. We're, we're just using mainly chicken litter and our cover crop is our main source of nitrogen. And then we usually put about a, only commercial fertilizer, we use about 50 pounds of, of N, that's all we're using now. But maybe I can possibly eliminate that and just get all my nitrogen from two cover crops and chicken litter to provide all the nutrients that my corn crop will need next year. And we're standing behind a bulk bag of uh, a cover crop mix that he has here. And we're gonna talk a bit, little bit about that and some of the obstacles and his thoughts why he, uh, he chose this. But I'm gonna read through the list. There's 13 different plant species in here, different seeds in here. And if you look at this, well, we'll talk about that more in a minute. He's got buckwheat, cow peas, forage sorghum, grain sorghum, Japanese millet, mung beans, okra, pearl millet, Prozo millet, safflower. You ever touch the safflower? I've never even seen one. Well, you'll, they're prickly. <laughs> uh, soybeans, sunflower, and sun hemp. Now this is a summer mix that he's using and it just came in from his wheat field that he's gonna be planting that at it. And I'll let Jason go over this particulars here, but, but I do wanna point out one of the things I always hear is when you plant these species, they separate and uh, you get a bit, you know, you get your small seeds and your big seeds separate. This came all the way from another state in the middle of the country, and I'm looking at the top of the bag, and it looks like it's a pretty good mix here. So I think that whole concept is may be a little, uh, may be a cover crop myth out there. I don't know, Jason. Right. But anyway, kind of talk a little bit about why you picked this, and what you're hoping to do with it, and uh, how you're going to seed it, and those types of things. Okay. Well, since we're, this will be one of the earliest we've ever planted a, a summer mix. Normally when we're planting a summer mix, we're planting after corn harvest. When, when South Carolina, we start harvesting corn the first week in um, October, okay. I, mean, I mean in August. And sometimes it runs until late September, first of October. So usually that first couple weeks in August, we can get a summer cover crop mix planted after corn. But this year, since I'm planting a cover crop after um, wheat, um, I decided to go with as many, um, had come up with a multi-species mix to try to come up with as many um, diverse species as I could after, planted after my wheat crop. So we have, a, what, three or four different um, legumes in here, yeah. and then um, about four different uh, grasses and a few broadleaf weeds. So we're just trying to have a diversity of, even though each one doesn't have many uh, the poundage rate is a total of 27 pounds to the acre. We don't have a whole lot of each species. Um, it's not one single dominant, but this kind of being a new mix for us and some of these species I've never even seen before. Uh, it's going to be some experimenting. Yeah, but, but yeah. We'll just see how it does. Well, from what I can tell, looking at with the, your millets and your and your sun uh, your sun hemp, and those those are going to get really tall. Right. So you talk about cover crops and you talk about kind of an architectural design, you know, those are going to provide uh, kind of a, a structure for the, the mung beans and some of the, uh, you know, your soybeans even and some of those lower growing plants that kind of grab onto and grow, grow up That's along right. there. So how tall do you expect this stuff to get? Well, the, the sun hemp in the sorghum Sudan will, will be the tallest, so, you know, that can get six to possibly eight feet tall. 
Now, of course, it's you can see some of the rates, like on the sorghum sedan, I think we only have maybe uh, only a pound to the acre, pound mm -hmm. or two. Mm -hmm. So since it's not super thick, it's not going to be crowded, so it may not have a tendency to get as tall as it would if it was a single species or maybe a three-way mix. So we're just trying to um, you know, build that layer and um, have enough sunlight to get down to the smaller plants, but not crowd it out too much. And a lot of times, I think, especially in the south, I think sometimes we can put too much of a grass, um, plant, or plant them too thick, where it's, especially on a sorghum sedan, where it can overcrowd and choke out everything else. Yeah, yeah, that can get really gnarly if you, right. you yeah, yeah, so that'll be interesting. Of course, we're gonna hope to be able to follow this a little bit, come back out maybe uh, after a month or so after you uh, seed it and take a look at it as it's growing and maybe help identify uh, some of these plants, uh, new, new cover crop seeds that you're trying. And I'm sure you're going to get a lot of people stopping along the edge of the road. Let me, uh, one final question, how are you going to seed this? What are you going to use? This will be planted with a grain drill um, and 20, 27 pounds to the acre, seven and a half inch spacing. Okay. So um, we'll bring the grain drill here in the shop and we'll, we have a method of calibration where we'll get it dialed in okay. dead on and then we'll go to the field, field and no-till it in. How, how deep you go? Which seed do you plant? Well, since there's a lot of shallow seeds in here, we'll probably do the shallowest setting. I just want to have it barely covered okay. up because I don't, I don't, I'm not certain about some of these seeds, the seeding depth, so we're just going to keep it as shallow as possible. Okay, everything. okay, okay. And then, if I heard you right, you're going to terminate this in the fall and plant another cover crop. That's right, so probably late September. Well, most of this will be going to seed by then, so we yeah. don't want it to seed out. So okay. we'll, we'll I don't know if we're gonna have to use a herbicide to terminate it. If I can possibly come in with a roller crimper to um, terminate it, okay. I'll try that. But we might have to use a herbicide to terminate and then we'll come in with the, um, probably a five way, five or six way um, winter mix that we'll plant after that. So you think about what you're gonna be adding from a bio, you, know, you, you may be adding uh, five to seven tons here and then you're coming back with a potential thing for your winter cover crop. So you, you could be, I mean, think about it in the context of harvesting corn silage or something like that. It's not right. unusual to get 18, 20 tons. In fact, that's what you shoot for, isn't it? That's right. And yeah. you're you're gonna get that kind of biomass with this kind of, a, and then yeah. looking at that in the context of raising up your organic matter, it, it'd be really interesting to see that, so. Yeah, the only thing would make it better if we had some cows to, to graze oh, well, this down. And then, uh, and cows then. require <laughs> fences. And, that's uh, right. <laughs> And sometimes they get out along the road. Yeah. Okay, well, listen, Jason, I appreciate it. Any other comments you might want to make? That's that? about it. I'm really looking forward to the uh, the okra that's going to be. Yeah. There's a pound of okra in here um, per acre. So that's going to be a lot of okra out there. So you said people stopping to take a look. Might yeah. be some people stopping to pick okra, too. Yeah, well, they may wonder what you're doing there, Jason. Right, you know, but I'm sure that's not all, the first they're time. They're always uh, wondering what I'm doing. <laughs> and again, we'll be following this. Hopefully, we'll get out here and get some footage of this thing after it's grown. Uh, and uh, see what we can see and uh, teach everybody a little bit about what they let these, these different plants look like early on. And, uh, and uh, don't be afraid, because you know, it's really fun, I think, to think of all the, all the different species, you know, who would have thought using safflower or bung beans or these as cover crops. And you think about it, we, we only use those plants that we have available to us right now. And we're trying to figure that out as agriculture is you know, the traditional cover crops. And, and it's, it's kind of exciting to think about where this might go when we get people plant breeding for specific goals to achieve by having a, 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 a certain type of, of uh, cover crop. Okay, thanks again, Jason, we appreciate it. Yeah.